Well, well, well. Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. It's a nice and dark Saturday morning over here from Helsinki, Finland. And as always, I want to be wishing you the best of the best, the happiest of the happiest early Sunday, Saturday, sorry, Saturday mornings that you'd ever have in good old cryptocurrency life, whether you're waking up from, for uh, for an early morning coffee like me over here in, uh, in in Eastern Europe, or if you're coming back from a late night in uh, in the Western Hemisphere. Well, I want to be wishing you well either which way. And we got plenty to talk about in the live scene right here, right now. So let's get right on into it. And of course, Bitcoin just playing out the intermediate time frames pretty damn well. I mean, it, you can you can really synthesize this whole range down into three into three major trend lines. We have the upper trend line, our major resistance for this range, right at the blue 377 exponential. Love the confluences right over there. Then we have our range low, right around 4,900, getting the spike the other day. Beautiful target hit, all good. And right now we're brushing up right against the red 10 moon average with this trend line right in the middle. So all of these trend lines provide trade setups and trade opportunities in the way that I look at it. And to actually follow up from yesterday, I should be I should be uh, I should be very transparent with this i did get rid of that uh, short position I actually got out of it with a little bit of a profit as well on my streamer account and my main account my main account got a much better exit at uh 50 50 my streamer account got an exit at like 50 80 or some shit uh but uh, fair, fair enough uh fair enough is fair enough i guess that was a trade of the day <laughs> can't really do too much when you're just stuck in a range like this so overall you know kind of a nothing trade really when it comes down to it um wanted want to get more of a trending move instead ended up being a scalp but you know fair enough coming into a weekend i really don't want to be having open positions either which way yes i do have this open right here which gives me some small long deltas but uh but overall i'm not really you know i'm not really looking to play a major position until we actually break this area right over here 4900 or break above right over here 5300 if we break to the upside above 5300 i do believe that it's very likely we'll see another move a very quick move likely towards the 56 to 5700 range right over here let me just kind of mark this out right over here is where i'd be looking towards and if we do break onto the downside below 48 4900 then i would be looking for a move down into the uh down, down around the 200 exponential and 21 uh and 21 exponential moving average right over here the purple and the yellow moving averages that you see a little bit underhead as i do look for those to be the major major supports that bitcoin's going to really be operating off of and as long as we kind of above there you know it's 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 a tough call as these moving averages all converge on each other within this range so it could take some time as bitcoin really does you know really does uh, really does put in some sideways time in this area but overall you know lower time frames is where it's all at until we actually resolve this area because well that's really the only chance to to make trades off. Sorry, let's go back on over here to this chart, getting a little bit more a uh, little bit more precisely. But overall, um, do I want to take another short uh, on top of this yellow twenty one exponential on the four hour double time frame? If it was a weekday, I probably would take the trade just to you know just to play a position. Um, very easy to manage as you know as long as we're below the twenty one exponential, you know I'd, I'd stay short. But right here on a weekend, not really too interested as typically we do get hunts on weekends. Uh, what I fear will what uh, will likely happen with this is we'll actually wick back up, test this. Uh, 52 to 50 to 5300 to share here right over here and then end the day right back where we started which is just so fucking common for a weekend uh we do see four hour stokes uh, actually pointed upwards and onwards getting quite erect right now but price actually not necessarily following up uh up too much um still being beheld in by this yellow 20 max so if i did have to take a trade in this this is exactly where i'd be managing off of i do like the confluences with this horizontal right over here but keep in mind this is a very 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 short-term time frame trading uh and i always like to separate the short-term time frames from the medium time frame from the high and the macro short-term time frames this is what we're looking at resistance 51 what do we want to call this 5135 uh support more preliminarily speaking right around 5,000, even psychological number um intermediate time frame is just this range right over here between 53 and 49 and the high and the macros is a little bit bigger we really have to go to the weekly for this as the weekly is going to set the pace, let me just actually get rid of all this. But as long as the weekly is above the yellow 21 exponential, this is to be just viewed as a pullback. However, with yesterday, we have the advent of closing CMEs, which CMEs do not do not trade on the weekend. So going over here to the CME chart, we do see what the weekly has actually closed like and confirmed like. And this is a nice little shooting star dildo, which is typically a sign of reversal. Um, and however, we will need we will need follow through on this, and we won't be able to have that until CMEs open back up on. Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. If you do see CMEs uh, take out the low of this dildo at 4,900, that would likely incite a test down to the low side of the range, perhaps around 40, around 4,500 most likely. 
um, which will be confluent with the daily, yeah, with the daily 200 simple moon average right over here. So this is kind of what's at stake right now and why it's important to be very cognizant of what's going on on the greater picture for Bitcoin. While the lower time frames are sexy and enticing and, you know, you feel like you can always trade them all the time, uh, it's the higher time frames where I feel a lot more comfortable with Mr. Bitcoin. If you want to trade lower time frames, I strongly suggest Forex. Um, Forex really seems to really seems to reward those sorts of players. Uh, longer term time frames, not as much. Anyways, while we're while we're here on the daily you do see that Bitcoin is having all these moving averages kind of converge on each other. So here's what I'm really looking at from the intermediate time frame as well as I want to see this yellow 20 minute exponential actually be given enough time to to crawl its way up to the 4900 ish level. It is rising up pretty damn rapidly. It is getting erect and it will only take a few more days actually before it's right around that area. Then we can actually go off of the exponentials once again, uh, rounding out every little, you know, every little facet of this price action, which to me actually does look like it wants to retrace further on the medium time frame perspective on the short term time frame i actually it actually looks to me like it probably wants to uh, pr uh, probably wants to rally up and test test some overhead even though i did say there is technically a trade opportunity right here on the yellow 20 minute exponential for the 4 hour total time frame uh, personally i i think that this area gets taken out and we do test that 5250 maybe even 5300 uh, and the perfect time would to be uh, to do it would be on the weekend especially when you know it doesn't take as much money to drive these markets and uh, and do these pretty nasty hunts um anyways <clears throat> we do have on the on you know on the higher uh, on the higher time frames uh daily Daily Stokes pointed down right now, which have been a pretty damn good measurement of, of overall momentum. Uh, daily RSI also giving up some bearish divergence as well, which I really, 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 really do not like to trade against, especially when we are still above the yellow 20-month expansion, because typically what I like to see is a test back down towards that area. However, the longer that Bitcoin spends going sideways here, the more and more time that that 21 exponential has to crawl up to the current price action. So, you know, it's 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 a delicate situation, essentially. Because yes, uh, indicators are down, are pointing further down. Doesn't mean they can't have another, you know, another little snipe into this area right over here. But I'd be waiting for that snipe really first and, f and foremost. Like I said, I'm not taking this trade right now. I'm not taking this short. I'll be waiting a little bit higher at uh, 5250 to 5300 most likely. So going back onto the daily, you know, I I do think that we probably that ultimately over the next week we do pull this back further. Uh, again, going off of the way that the CME is closed, that is indicative of selling pressure. But again, need to actually confirm below 4,900 to get that next move down. Um, likely, I would say, if we do break 4,900, you know, technically, yes, there is going to be support at 47, 48. But, uh, but, but realistically, we're not just going to come down there to bounce it up. We're likely going to come down to 4,550, 4,500-ish area um, and test the weekly 21 exponential, which is very important right now because the weekly 21 exponential, we are extremely likely to both open and close our first weekly total above it for the first time in well over a year. Uh, the last time was December 2017. Maybe maybe early January 2018, uh, but as you can see, a very 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 long time ago, and in a in a galaxy far far away, um, Bitcoin's gonna extremely likely gonna unless if we have just the most massive meltdown uh, between today and tomorrow, um, very likely to do it. So I would still be in pullback mode, looking to be a buyer of the pullback. So if we did get back down to that you know 45 4600 ish level, I would be a buyer there um, for a bounce at the very least, and uh, and probably another the try towards the prior highs but keep in mind this area is riddled with resistance from the higher time frame perspective so as always separating the time frames and keeping it you know keeping it one step at a time uh this area is marked out first and foremost on the daily blue 377 exponential very very important for long-term trend identification we got the two-day 200 exponential which by the way the two-day uh two the, the two-day has not only confirmed a rejection with a longer like a doji dildo off the 200 exponential this purple moving average right here but also we have lost the blue 377 which we did close last night very important not only that but we do have two Two-day stokes pointing downwards, which for the past year have been a damn good indication of downwards momentum. Uh, this was your high at 20,000 in December 2017. Then right over here, this was your double top at 12,000 in February. This was your double top, or sorry, this was your top at 10,000 in May, top at 8,400 in August. And once again, we're, we're in this more critical zone and crossing down while also getting rejected from a major exponential moving average, actually two along the way. And uh, and also I do believe that, oh, nope, the, the RSI is not lots of the exponential 
launched just yet, but also of great importance. We do see that the jewel is uh, is getting some more critical zone, an area that we just have not seen hit since literally 2017, December 2017, when Bitcoin was uh, was 20,000 price per Bitcoin. So again, it's one of those things where um, you do get this on strong trending moves, but uh, but it typically does call the end of that of that current momentum. So as far as the two day chart is confirmed is concerned, uh, this one looks like it wants to come back down to about 4,800, 4,900 ish level that kind of base down down around there and then more preliminary support again 4550 so i do like the confluences with the 4550 ish area for a little bit of a deeper pullback uh, is it time to be bearish off something like that i mean we can discuss that in a little bit but uh, but as a trader no it's not really it's not really it's not really appropriate to be bearish like looking for a move towards prior lows until we actually break back down but down below the weekly 200 exponential uh the three-day dildo also closed last night as well this is a clear rejection of the 200 exponential as you can see not only that but we do have uh, we're we're in the process of creating a little bit of divergence going on right now uh, nothing too crazy, um, but it is present. And uh, and again, just a rejection of that exponential. You can see that the 89 exponential at 4,900 is essentially, you know, cradling this bitch as well. So it, I do like these confluences with the overall malaise of Bitcoin. And of course, we got the 377 coming in where? Right around 4,550. So I really like how all of, how all of these intermediate, or sorry, all these higher time frame charts have good overplay with each other. And that's typically when I do see the best trades emerge from. So what's really going to happen over this next week, uh, I would imagine, is we're going to Get, we're gonna get confirmation on whether this move is legitimate or not and what I what I mean by legitimate is is do we want to actually test higher and play out a more prolonged bounce which Sorry, actually, before I get into that, I should also talk about more of the resistances. We also have the weekly 89 exponential and the green 55 exponential right over here, crossing the downside and also providing a rejection. First pass likely to be a sell, and I would say it's selling. And then and then most importantly, the monthly, the 21 exponential and the red 10 moon average crossing the downside. Again, a lower period below a higher period, and uh, likely to be a likely to be a sell, especially after the first pass since uh, since six months ago when we lost it in November 2018. Again, this is this is the most important one for me, as uh, this is what I used when I I was trading equities as a market maker authorized trader on New York Stock Exchange are going to judge if it was generally bullish or generally bearish. And as you can see in the past with Bitcoin, when it actually lost a 21 exponential, that was when it was sent on to its red dildo capitulation death hole right over here. Retested the, the 21 once, twice, three times, and then broke it on the fourth time. And that actually perfectly timed the bullish momentum market uh, from $300 to $20,000. So again, looking at this area right over here, you know, I'd, I'd say on first pass, probably likely to get rejected but it operates on a monthly total time frame. Okay, so going back to the three day, which is where I wanted to kind of flesh out this discussion. And what I was just making sure that I'm recording good, good recording, good. Um, so what I'm saying about this next week is it's very important because if Bitcoin does pull back to around 45, 50, 4,600, and we fail that area, that's the time where I, as a trader, start to get more apprehensive. And that's the first big warning signal. That's that's like Bitcoin just, just firing off a massive flare saying, hey, pay attention because this is about to get hairy. And likely if that were to happen, the next move is going to be towards 4,100. Um, but more importantly, it's going to tell us about the overall, you know, the overall trend and kind of where we are. Um, the other option is that we actually have a, if we do have a very nice reaction off of 4550, 4600, then I would be looking for this overall move to uh, test towards prior highs and probably make new highs on this move. Probably drive towards that 56 to 5700 ish number. That would make sense. But for right now, it's going to be a waiting game as we do kind of fill in the space between now and next week. Um, I would, I, I would say that it's certainly a strong, a, a, str a very strong likelihood that we do carry on this, uh, this pullback further down. Um, sometimes sometime into the next week I've been saying this for the past couple of weeks but this is this is now the time where it starts to be a little bit more a little bit more enticing um, as a trade and uh, and it's quite literally this this easy right now in fact just going off the CMEs I would say that hey if we just even tick below 4900 if, if you see if I see if I see CMEs tick below 4900 I will take the sell because well there, there's a good trade there another 300 maybe 400 dollar trade down to 45 4600 ish area um, and this is a nice shooting star dildo and that is confirmed on CMEs remember they they do close Sunday at uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern time, and they will open. Or sorry, Friday at at 7 p.m. Eastern time, and they will open at some, uh, at uh, Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So it's still going to take a little bit of a uh, little bit of waiting time. It could also be a scenario that we do not even take out the low of this. If that were to happen, that would be uh, that would be wildly bullish, and we'd likely make the next move towards that 56, 5700 ish area relatively fast. Um, relatively fast. So right now, um, going to be more of a waiting game. I don't think that there's going to be any big trades over the weekend. Uh, I think I think it's very unlikely. Um, 
unless we were to, I mean, unless we were to close this week down on spot and then CMEs open lower. I mean, that's that's a possibility, I suppose. Um, actually, yeah, that 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 is a possibility to be fair. Anyways, going back on over to our lower time frame chart, you know, it's if it, trading this is quite easy right now. <clears throat> if I should never say that, uh, but 51.35, we if we take that area out right over here, likely to make our way into the next sort of blocky territory, which I'll put in right over here between about 52.50 to 5300 right over here. Yeah, that's this is actually going to perfectly get it right over here. So if Bitcoin does march its way into that area, I actually will take a short off that even if it is on a weekend, just because I don't think that we're going to I don't think it's likely to 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 break it out to the upside. Uh, even if it is going to break it out to the upside on a weekend, it's likely to happen during weekday probably a be a nice hunt uh, for for a nice little scalp um, with potential to trend to the downside to potential to, to trend to the downside based off of the daily the two based off of all the higher time frames again to wrap it up I mean daily Stokes coming down daily RSI bearish divergence trending below the exponential daily jewel also given a sell by the way the price on the jewel will be getting raised um, end of month I will be raising it um, <clears throat> should I say significantly I don't know about significantly but I'll, I'll, I'll I certainly will be raising it I kind of almost want to discourage people from from buying it to be quite honest um and, but but however if you are in the technical analysis program the the discount available for that is is always available because really my point is, is that it's so much more important to get the actual technical analysis done first because you can have the best indicator possible but if you don't have good good risk management it's it only takes one time to fuck you up and that's that's really what it comes down to nothing is nothing is 100 percent um even as powerful as that one can be <laughs> so fair enough anyways um okay off that topic yeah two day two day charts you know coming down as well uh, two day two day stokes which have had some good uh, good historical jesus christ man what's in my eye uh good historical relevancies as well as just major rejections off these areas too i mean i would say if i had to pick direction it would be down um it, it would be short term probably does test a little bit higher whether it's 52 52 50 uh you know it's all the same uh but higher time frames you know i, I would be looking for a test lower uh, over the next week most likely i mean unless if it wants to play it out this weekend which i think is i, I think is a lot less likely uh 12 hour yeah, tw uh, twelve hour resistance coming in right around fifty one fifty. Uh, just kind of rounding out this uh, this this next horizontal right here. We do have twelve hour stokes getting uh, right into the bearish control zone. We haven't seen that in a while. Uh, we do see twelve hour RSI playing out some bearish divergence, but we've already got that move down to the twenty one exponential. So I do like that. That was the impetus for our call, saying, um, "Hey, you know, Bitcoin's likely coming down to forty nine hundred and bouncing off there." And well. Sometimes that good old technical analysis, it fucking works. Um, okay, cool. So we, we spoke about all of that. As always, want to remind myself on the higher time frames. Um, I'm sure, you know, if you've been tuning into this content, you, you already know this and it's probably just annoying. But, uh, but hey, it's always important to look at the MVT signal, which I haven't looked at actually today. So I'm curious what it's going to say. And the MVT signal is still looking pretty damn toppy. Uh, it is in the red zone. This thing has called all of the major tops in Bitcoin's history pretty much perfectly, as well as the bottoms. Uh, what it signals are red is when the oscillator gets above the 140 marker and sorry to explain the oscillator it is the network value divided by the daily transaction value and then you do see that we do have a moving average on it as well this this uh, orange 20 uh, i believe it's a i believe it's a uh, what what um yeah it's a 90 actually or sorry it's a 13 it's a 13 yeah so okay so fair enough anyways there's there's something to be aware of here though and as we do see bitcoin or sorry the mvt kind of straddle around this orange moving average it is very important because when we actually do break the orange uh moving average that's when i start actually to look for this to play out and just kind of you know back test this once again uh we do see did i explain what it is it's network value by the divided by the daily transaction value anyways <laughs> jesus christ man i've done it too many times uh you already know you already fucking know man uh it's probably probably patronized to, to even remind you i apologize about that um but overall you know when it does signal red it can stay in the red zone for quite some time you know months at a time so timing a a major drop down uh is a little bit more difficult but there are ways there are ways to do it and if we zoom in and do a little bit of a case study right over here we can see that's uh well let's do it on the top first you can see that bitcoin was signaling red all the way through uh once bitcoin hit around twelve thousand. so twelve thousand price per bitcoin remember we got up we got all, all the way up to almost twenty thousand price per bitcoin which is quite impressive not only did we get divergence on the top right over here but we also once we broke this this moving average that's when the that's when the bearish momentum took over right here at about seventeen thousand dollars not only that but i'll bring up the stokes which the stokes crossing down and getting out of the critical zone as well was my next big indicator so all those three components in confluence with each other with 
are, 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 are the signal in, in, in the way that I look at it. Backtesting it, it has been pretty damn good. Uh, going over and backtesting this one right over here. You know, we signal red once Bitcoin's right around 70, 7,300. It gets all the way up to 8,400. But look at this. Once it breaks the moving average, that was right here. Once, well, also when it broke the 10 simple, by the way. And then we also go over to the Stokes and the Stokes crossing down and getting below the critical zone. Well, there, that perfectly actually timed the bearish momentum once again. We can test it right over here in this segment where Bitcoin's marching its way up, marching its way up. It breaks the moving average right here on this day. There you go. And looking at the Stokes, this is the same day right over here, crossing down and boom, there you go. A move, uh, a nice little momentous move. So, you know, back testing it, it has been pretty damn good. And are we signaling that right now? Well, we have red on the MVT signal. Okay, so, so strike one. We do have daily Stokes crossing down, but not below the critical zone almost strike two is is it is it breaking the moving average no so it's still not quite there just yet and i would be more lenient with it until you know in, in until we get a full-on signal because as you can see it can spend a lot of time in this area i mean we've already spent what a, a couple weeks here it's been a while or at least it feels like it's been a while so so yeah i am looking for those for those signals but uh not quite present just yet getting damn close Getting damn close, but once we actually see that break it and uh, and and see the Stokes come down below the critical zone, I would say that that is the time for at least for myself to take position. Of course, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Just sharing what I'm doing. These that sort of same situations. And does that imply that we're going to make new lows off this? That's not the implication with something like this. The implication is that we're putting in a major top. Uh, talking about major lows is a different conversation, which would it's 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 a certainly a possibility absolutely i'm not i'm not in the camp that says the low is definitely in for bitcoin i don't think it's appropriate to say that i could i i think it's a, i think it's equally appropriate to say that the low the low is as a trader you can't as a trader you can't be looking for a new low as long as we're above the 200 simple moving average to be fair to put it really fucking bluntly that's just a fact. You can have all of your opinions. You can have all the mental masturbation in the world. Until we actually break that, it's not appropriate to be talking about, you know, looking for trading for new lower lows. You can talk about whatever the fuck you want because talking has no, you know, accountability, right? But trading, on the other hand, does have, well, accountability with your PL. So as far as that goes, I'm not going to be taking any major downside trades until we actually break the, the 200 simple, which is all the way down here at around 3,500, this pink moving average that you see. And my God, it didn't save it. I wanted it to be white. Let's make it white right now. There we go. There we go. All right, nice and nice and clear now. Yeah, so I'm talking about the white moving average. Um, as you can see, Bitcoin has to chew through a lot to even get there. In fact, more importantly, the purple 200 expansion moving average right over here is of significant importance as well. Now, I would say that if Bitcoin did break the 200 uh, exponential moving average, it is that that's my trigger for for taking a trade down towards this 200 simple, which is 3,500. So a nice uh, $600 trade from 41 to 35 ish area. Um, and that would once again bring on a more a more pressure on scenario for talking about new lows, and we, we you know we'll, we'll we'll discuss it if we get there. Of course, this is well and far away right now. It's like completely inappropriate to be talking about, but uh, but 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 it is it is a good idea to have an idea of what you know of of what the plan is going to be um, if and when it does happen. So for right now, um, you know the two hundred exponential is kind of going to kind of be the gatekeeper for that. It held Bitcoin back for the past five months in this area, uh, and I'd imagine that because it was such a strong resistance on the way up, it's likely to be a strong support on the way down. Just like this area over here took a very long time to break six thousand, it was a very strong support, and it's likely to be a very strong resistance on the way up, which we're kind of getting our first, you know, first preliminary test into this area in a way uh, if you look at the higher time frames okay so look uh keeping it on the weekly we do have weekly stokes getting pretty damn up there as well um you know levels that we just haven't seen since you know december 2017 uh again just a little bit you know a little bit concerning also on top of that we do have the weekly the weekly mvt signal also signaling red as well which is I mean, it's actually it's actually creating divergence here between the last high, which is pretty fucking crazy, man. That is pretty crazy. Um, so yeah, fair enough. Anyways, taking that off and going back into the charts, let's go over and see how GBDC closed the week. I'm just curious. We closed down. It looks like yes, giving up this area, and that to me tells me that we do probably want to want to carry out this on this 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 one on a little bit downwards. Um, Next, uh, GBTC probably does bounce a little bit over here, filling the gap. But ultimately, I would I would like to see GBTC come back down and test the 21 exponential. So that does make me a little bit more confident that next week is going to be a week of pullback. Again, GBTC does not trade on the weekends. It trades trades only on weekdays with regular markets, even though it is OTC fucking garbage. <laughs> That's what, what OTC is um, for the most part. Um, 
but uh but we have daily stokes crossing down these well actually not really they're kind of trying to cross up right now but da uh, daily rsi bearish divergence along the way yeah i'd be looking for this move to come back down likely to the 21 exponential somewhere right around here which would put spot prices around that 45 50 to 4600 ish level so i would i would feel more confident saying that um coming in coming in next week uh actually like time in a trade and this is something that we've been looking for for a long for uh, i wouldn't say a long time but you know about a week now it's actually like really starting to formulate itself and put itself you know in visual view uh, how do we close out the weekly? Uh, weekly, yeah, weekly is a clear rejection of the 89 exponential and the 50 exponential. And look at these guys. They are, they're, they're not just obviously rejecting price action and making a massive, what do you want to call this? A gravestone dildo, a long, uh, a, um, a shooting star dildo. I don't care what you call it, but we have good volume on a massive rejection of these two moving averages, which we do have a lower period crossing the downside of a higher period, which tells you about the overall trend. And they are more importantly gaining divergence away from each other. So this is telling me that the, that the bots and the algorithms are actually on this sell side of this equation and do want to force price actions for uh, do want to force price action back downwards um i would also be looking for the 21 exponential to be kind of around that range on the next tick as well but uh but looking at this i think it is quite clear that uh, that the next move likely is down um over the next week um, and again, we're going to see the same thing on spot charts right over here, but to a lesser degree, they are not as, uh, the, these moving averages are not as, uh, divergent or, or diverge from each other, which would suggest that the trend is stronger to the downside. Um, so we're going to get a new tick on that one at 8 PM Eastern or Eastern time on Sunday. And, uh, and I'd imagine that if we do see divergence on this, this is going to be the next impetus for a move back down in, into the middle of, um, in, into the mid of, uh, 4,000 ish area, um, at the very least. So again, keep, uh, keep that one in mind, obviously still have to wait until tomorrow, but staring us right in the face. Um, monthly, of course, you know, we have the same sort of thing going on. We, uh, we not only have our first test of this yellow 21 expansion, but we also have the 10 simple moon average crossing the downside of it which is something that i use of importance to kind of judge you know the strength of trend right and this is actually our first cross down and is very very normal and very uh natural for for assets to come up and test these crosses and the next move off this is going to be insightful into whether the and how into how the bots and the algos are actually and essentially the market movers are trading this are they going to be on the buy side or the sell side if we do close above above the 21 on the uh, on the monthly i'll be i'll be taking some more long-term longs and we probably do make our way deep into the 6,000 area maybe even 7,000 i mean it's, it's very possible uh, it's, it's the same sort of mentality that we had over here with uh, with bitcoin closing above this green 50 exponential i was saying this i was saying this verbatim if bitcoin closes below the green 50 exponential on the monthly i'm bearish and i'm looking for likely new lows to 2500 if it closes above then that opens up the floodgates for a move into the deep 4000s well we didn't just get deep 4000s we got 5000 babies so again uh, i was i was i guess i was a little bit too conservative on that uh in the same potential lies uh, you know relies here if we do close above the 21 exponential there's really nothing stopping you from this range uh you know deep into the six thousands maybe even seven thousand um you i mean you've seen how it moves when these monthly areas get taken out before uh but i would say what's more what's more statistically likely to happen is that we do sell off on this first pass and uh and you know we'll take it from there I'll, I'll put it that way anyways um okay so i think i've spoken enough about mr bitcoin uh we have have we looked at the longs and shorts no we have not uh a little bit under twenty five thousand open longs versus eighteen and a half thousand open shorts so we do see longs letting go of their positions a little bit a little bit of distribution going on which does make sense. We do see that in the oscillators. Just kind of confirming that with uh, with actual fundamental or sorry, uh, market dynamics uh, statistics right over here. Um, interest for 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 our longs is almost twenty percent. Interest for shorts three uh, not point not not three percent. There's nothing. Neither, neither one of these is high, but obviously the the longs is significantly higher than the shorts. But again, uh, two and a half thousand of these guys hedged, so we really have sixteen thousand open naked um, shorts versus tw almost twenty five thousand open longs. So again, there is a great imbalance between these two. But but we have not really been seeing this this sort of uh, this sort of thing play out recently. Uh, going over here to the shorts chart, it has been a thing in the past where sh when shorts get down and in, uh, down and dirty into this blue box territory, that is where th uh, that is where major dumps emerge from. You know, again, your twelve thousand dump, ten thousand dump, eight thousand dump, seventy three hundred dump, six thousand dump. But the last couple of times have not have not given that same sort of opportunity. So that does break the trend. It doesn't necessarily start a new trend, um, but uh, but it does break the former trend. So it is it is less reliable there. More tan there, there are more tangible things going on right now, and uh, and with regards to what price action is doing, I'd say that 
you know, again, just putting all the puzzle pieces together. Lower time frames probably want to pop up here, test a little bit higher. Uh, if we do take out 5150, I'll be looking for a move towards 5250, 5300-ish area into this blue box territory for now. A little bit of pressure in this area as well, um, being held by the 21 exponential. But again, you know, weekends are for hunting. Uh, after a nice test of our bottom support right here at 4900 that we were looking for over the past uh, week, uh, bought up pretty damn well. Got some bull wicks along the way. I'd say that we probably hold this for now. And uh, and what could be a potential actually if you are super bullish is something like this something like this where we actually wedge ourselves into this uh, ascending triangle right here which is very which is very much possible to be fair uh, sorry let me actually get it right let's do it on a three uh, a three hour chart seems to get it best as you do as we do have a nice well well-defined resistance trend line uh, governing our tops um but overall you know as long as we're kind of following this trend line I mean, this this would be bullish. So th this would be the more bullish interpretation. Ascending triangle, uh, an ascending triangle measurement would be made on this one would be probably somewhere. I'm gonna guess that 56, 5700 number. Yep, looks like that's gonna be right in 5700 actually. So you know, if Bitcoin can hold this area, that would be mega bullish. Uh, mega bullish um, and it does look like uh, lower time frames do you want to rally here and fill this out a little bit more uh, so that also offers up that hey as long as this trend line holds that is a potential that is a potential although i would say based off the higher time frames uh it is it is likely on higher time frame perspective that we do move down i, I would say that it's more likely that we move down below 4900 before we actually break out of 5300 I'd, I'd say that that's uh, i'd say that I'd, I'd be comfortable saying that lower time frames however you know you probably you probably do have a trade back up into the top side of the range um, as we do kind of fill out space anyways go check out the other top shit coins get some uh, get some a uh, bird's eye view of what's happening and real and realistically for the for the other top shit coins it's actually quite simple right now um it's it's actually quite simple where does the weekly close for most of these guys? And we'll start off with Mr. Buterall. Mr. Buterall, Mr. Buttersworth still resting and still actually bu being buoyed off of this yellow 20 max exponential. We called a move down there earlier this week. We got the move down there and now we're bouncing up. I would say lower time frames we want to bounce back up to 170 in the more, you know, in, in the more immediate future. But higher time frames is where it's all at right now. And it's going to come down to where we actually close this bitch on 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday, which if we close above this 21 exponential, which is around 161, I would be looking for continuations higher i'd be looking at, at the very least for a retest of the prior high and probably probably move beyond and if and if mr buterall does move beyond two two twenties probably the next target i mean it's, it's going to be right over here man yeah that's around 210 to 220 uh, if that happens now if we end below the 20 max benchmark, if we end below 161 i would be looking for for a deeper retracement at the very least down to 144 and a half so we're at a major decision point is is my um you know is is i suppose what the crux of what i'm saying is because <clears throat> you know, depending upon how we react uh, and close this weekly, it's going to really dictate the next the next phase, the next pace. Uh, for now, you know, uh, Mr. Buterall just looking like this. If if you wanted to make a trade in the lower time frames, if a break above 167, I'd be looking for that next move towards 170 right over here. Um, break 170, and uh, I, I wouldn't even put this guy right here now, even though even though it was the gatekeeper on the move down. Um, you know, if, if we break above 170, you probably do get a ride towards the prior highs. I don't think that you're going to stop at 175. I think that you probably get another run towards prior highs. Uh, daily, daily soaks are going to be down. Daily oscillators are down and giving us some divergence along the way, but that doesn't mean that we can't pop back up. And I'd say it's very, very likely to test 170. The real question is, do we break 170 and pop all the way back up to the prior high and really grind this area out? It's, I mean, it's possible on a weekend. This, this will be the time to do it. Um, but again, it's going to come down to the weekly for the, for the actual direction and we just have to wait until tomorrow at 8 PM Eastern time. That's all. That's really all it comes down to Uh Litecoin, Same thing came down to our, came down to the low side of our range, 75 bucks, 75 and a half dollars. Probably going to bounce up here. I'd be looking at a target somewhere around $84, $85, uh, so, uh, somewhere probably right up, right back up to the tens and boon average. Now, here's the thing for the weekly. Weekly is bouncing off of perfectly our weekly support. Again, these are areas that we've been, that we've had in for ages. And uh, now we're just getting plays off them. And again, this is why I like to kind of show, this is why I like to describe things before they happen and then talk about them after they happen, which can be confused for hindsight trading. It's not. I mean, we've been talking about this for ages now the same area 75 and a half dollars and now we're bouncing off it so there you go you know if you did buy that area i think that you have a nice scalp on your hands at the very least and i mean it could be a possibility that we do you know uh try higher in fact i would say you know if, if you are going to be buying dips Litecoin's probably the better one to be doing it on just because i'd say that this i, I do believe that Litecoin's bottomed i don't believe that Litecoin's going to be making lower lows does that mean that Litecoin can't 
you know, come back to its prior lows, it can, it can, that's, and that's going to depend on Bitcoin, but I'd say that it's least likely to, it is, it, it is the one that I'd be, feel comfortable with saying, I do believe that this one's bottomed out. I don't believe that Mrs. Litecoin's going lower. Um, a return to the low, that's a different question, um, which, you know, that's going to depend on what Bitcoin does. Uh, for right now, Mrs. Litecoin, definitely the strongest in the, in the market or one of the strongest in the market, uh, still above the 21 exponential. And I do believe, or, or after having a golden cross, the, the green 55 and the purple 200 right over here, I do think that we, that we do ultimately, you know, pick this guy up or gal up, this girl up, this beautiful lady up and, uh, and try higher. Now, here's the thing on the daily jewel, we actually are breaking the trend line right now. So if the, you know, if, if this does bounce up, it probably is going to be a sell. It probably is going to be a sell which does make this a little bit more of a delicate situation because not only do we have bearish divergence on this top, but the daily jewel is significantly more important. I mean, we're getting, we're actually got a perfect sell signal. Now here's the thing. We got the sell signal when, when Litecoin was, you know, $93, it's already gone down to 75. So you did get a pretty nice move over there, but now we're actually breaking this trend line right here, which I would imagine holds some weight coming all the way back from November lows. So here's the thing. Usually I do look for bounces in this area and I would be looking for bounces on the lower time frames, but I do think that this bounce gets sold into and we probably do carry on this retracement lower. If Bitcoin does come down to 45, I would imagine that Mrs. Litecoin comes down to about 66. Um, and that's going to be the big, and that's probably going to be a massive buy. Um, but again, need, you know, need, needs to wait for the weekly to close and then we can kind of judge this one out. Uh, we do see weekly stokes getting really, really tired up in the, uh, up in the more critical range, which is not boded too well for, uh, for Mrs. Litecoin in the past, uh, going over here, let's go check out the other top shit coins. I'm curious what they look like. Uh, we got Cardano's what's Cardano's looking like rejection off the 10 simple. I think that we've already kind of, mm, I've already played out the bounce that I'm looking for. Um, no, I, th I think that this one does try higher. I think that this one does try hard. Uh, 1750. I, I still would, you know, we hit our first target of 1700, which we spoke about yesterday. I, I do feel like this one actually does try hard. Um, could it be that we're just making a descending triangle right now? Very possible. Very possible. But um, I don't, I, I do see four hour stokes are up. I do see daily. Daily kind of looks like it wants to bounce to me as well. Yeah, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be bearish on Cardano until you actually break below the 21 exponential, and then I'd be looking for a move down towards 15 or a little bit below 1500. But for now, I think that this bounce gets gets extended more along with the rest of the market. I'm pretty, you know, I, I feel pretty confident in saying that. I believe that you know most of the market's going to bounce up today. The question is, where does it get stifled at? And I'd say this next this next level right here at 1750 for Cardano, um, relatively speaking, what does a weekly look like? Weekly, weekly has not made any new lows, but we're also have we're also kind of falling up a massive long like a doji dildo. Uh, this one's hard as well. I, I feel like the story is not not so complete just yet. We do have some. Uh, do we have some hidden bearish divergence in this guy? Yeah, we do. We actually do technically have some hidden bearish divergence. So the weekly is the the, the weekly would suggest some down here. Uh, let's go check out uh, BNB cone. What's BNB doing? We called it bouncing this one yesterday, and still bouncing, baby, still bouncing. Um, oh, hit uh, hit our first target of eighteen and a half dollars. Uh, does this one try higher though? Let's go down to the lower time frame to judge this one out. Um, yeah, this one's difficult. This one's difficult. We have a very obvious trend line right here. Oops, let me put it in. A very obvious one right here. Uh, if we do break this area, 18, 18 and 40 cents, and I'd be looking for a move back up to uh, almost $19. Um, four hour time frame is looking a little bit tired. Um, but I don't have a strong opinion on it. Uh, I really don't have a strong opinion on it. The daily, the daily looks like it wants to as well. The daily does look like it wants to bounce higher as well. Maybe we get a wick up to almost around $19 or such. Um, overall, though, Got the perfect sell signal on the jewel just the other day, or sorry, not the other day, but on the fourth of April, so about almost ten days ago, right over here when it was nineteen and a half dollars, we got we got our we, we hit our when we hit our major target of sixteen dollars down around here. So sorry, sixteen and a quarter down here, which is a pretty nice move. It's almost twenty percent move. Uh, I would you know I, I do think that this bounce probably does get carried out a little bit more before before we do see a little bit more pressure come on to the downside. Uh, weekly, holy man, holy shit, man. Yeah, weekly support is all the way down here at fourteen and a half bucks, but uh, or sorry, almost. Yeah, I'm almost a little bit, 14 and three quarters. Um, but this weekly is getting bought back real well. I mean, if this weekly ends above uh, $18, this is going to get continuation. And we're going to we're gonna see a straight shot towards $22. Or sorry, what is this? Yeah, about $22. Jesus Christ, man. Um, but again, I, I, I feel like it's more tired than anything here. 
uh 12 hour wants to rally yeah 12, 12, 12 hour makes me confident that we will see 19 dollars uh most likely on this bounce um zcash what's zcash doing uh zcash looking a little bit more toppy to me um but if the rest of the market's going to bounce this one probably bounces back up to around 75 and a quarter if the rest of the market wants to bounce but this one's still you know daily daily stokes down daily daily jewel gave a sell signal way over here in the top and we already got you know we already got this move down so it's it's more likely to bounce right now jesus christ 16 16 and a quarter percent move not bad yeah i'd be saying that this one probably wants to bounce with, with the rest of the market um what's 12 hour say 12 hour looks more or sorry four hour looks more toppy 12 hour looks Ugh. yeah it, it i do think that we carry out on bounce but i do believe that the bounce is going to be a sell so around uh what i say on the daily yeah, around 75 if, if it got there i'd probably be a seller uh if it does break down below 68 and 80 cents i'd be a, i'd be a seller as well looking for a move down likely to hear it around uh, 64 bucks uh bcash sorry someone really didn't like that i called bcash bcash the other day i don't do it because i'm like a hater of bcash i don't really i don't really have any strong opinion i mean i'm not like a fan of it either it's just easier to say man <laughs> it's, easy, it's just way easier to say you know i'd call bitcoin bcash if if it if that was easier it's not though bitcoin's you know bitcoin's fucking bitcoin uh, it's the granddaddy baby it's the granddaddy um yeah the question is here is did we already play out the bounce or not because i would i would have liked to seen the move get all the way to around almost 300 dollars, and we we didn't quite get there uh four hour looks more droopy than not four hour looks like it wants to come back down you know I, i'd be more bearish on bcash i'd be looking for a move back down to 260 i think that that, that that one looks like it wants to come back down to 260 regardless of the rest of the market looking like it kind of wants to bounce up here uh bcash wants to come back down to actually not just 260 but probably 250 Probably 250 for the full on uh, full on area. I would be looking for a bounce up 250 though. Uh, Tron Cash, Tron Cash looks like it wants to bounce me. I'd be looking at uh, 2.8 cents ish area as we spoke about yesterday. Um, yeah, 2.7 seven and a half cents was was already met. So the first target was hit. You know, again, if the rest of the market wants to bounce, this one's going to bounce back up to 2.8 and a half. Uh, only way that I get more bearish on this one is if we break back down below two and a half cents. If we break two and a half cents, I would be looking for a move. Likely, I mean, it, it gets pretty bad. Likely down around here at around 2.2 cents if we break two and a half cents. But uh, still, you know, still holding above it. And I do think that it's going to be, we, we play at a bounce first before anything else. Uh, Neo Cash wants to bounce. Neo Cash wants to bounce back up to almost twelve dollars. I'd say. Um, yeah, uh, eleven sixty nine first target, then twelve dollars second target. Uh, EOS Cash, what do we got on on over here? EOS Cash. Um, I'd probably want to see a bounce towards five fifty, but it, this one's so tight, it's it's difficult. Uh, Daily's a little bit more bearish. Da Daily wants to come down, so higher time frames are a little bit, you know, do do signal that it wants a little bit more of a pullback. And look at how the weekly is going to be closing. Again, it's going to depend where the weekly actually does this. If the weekly closes like this, I would be looking for a retracement back down to four sixty, and perhaps even lower than that. Um, but again, you have to wait until Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. If, if the weekly ends anything like this, anywhere below 550, I'll be looking for a further retracement down. I'll, I'll synthesize it that way. Uh, if we end above, then I'll be looking for continuations probably towards 650. <laughs> you know, it's, it's going to be a while. Um, but again, going to hinge on what we do tomorrow. If it ends like this, down. Um, let's see what else we got. XRP cash. XRP cash coming all the way down to our lowest support on the weekly. Very... <laughs> Very, very sad. Getting rejected by the daily 21 exponential moving average as well. The, the nipple's been free, but to the wrong side. Brad Golikowski, we need you, man. We need you. Jesus Christ, man. This one just can't catch a break. Uh, bearish divergence on the daily. That's already played out, though. Um, weeklies are hitting major supports. Uh, it's, again, it's going to depend on where the weekly closes. You know, I would be more lenient. with This one This one actually does have a chance to salvage itself, to be fair. Um, if it does close the weekly above 34.5 cents, which is significantly higher than where we are right now, to be fair, uh, then yes, I would be looking for the next move to take us to 40.5 cents. But right now, that's, you know, we're well below that area. So again, going to depend on where we close yet tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, daily looks more bearish. Day looks more bearish. Day looks like wants to come back down to the low side of the range, to be honest. Uh, 30 cents. Um, not good. Monero Cash right over here. What do we got? Uh, Monero Cash mm, being held by the 200 simple. Don't like that. Yeah, it already got rejected at our area at $70. Um, this one looks looks to me like it wants to come down uh, before anything else. Uh, wants to come down. What does a 12 hour say? Yeah, 12 hour coming down to uh, 62 and a half bucks right over here. Put in a nice horizontal as well. There we go. <clears throat> right around there. Um, $62.50, I'd say. Um, yeah, da daily stokes down. Uh, are, do we have a nice trend line here, too? I think we do. And are we breaking it? It's a more important question. We are not just yet. 
not confirmed at least just yet. Uh, but if we do break that trend line, then not only would I be looking for a retracement down to 62 and a half to, or 62 and a quarter, no, 62 and a half, but I'd be looking for it further to actually like uh, 58 and a half if that would happen. Um, let's see what else we got, baby. What else we got? Stellar cash, stellar cash. Uh, looks to me like it wants to bounce a little bit here. What does 12 hours say? 12 hours right at resistance, but, uh, I would be saying a bounce to around. I'd like to see this one to bounce to about 12 cents. Um, we've been saying that for the past couple of days and I, and I still kind of hold on to that. I do think that uh, we do test 12 cents before anything else. Um, daily, daily, daily is daily does want to come down to be fair. does want to come down, but, uh, but, but more immediate time frames want to bounce up. Now, again, same thing for this one as, as the myriad of other, you know, of, of the other ones that we just looked at, it's going to really depend on where the yellow 20 max potential is on the weekly. And what's up, Logan Schumann. Good to meet you, man. As always, pleasure to meet new people. And my God, I'm loving these new, uh, these new emojis too. Um, but the weekly, the weekly 21 is pretty much pertinent to almost all of the majors, uh, all that I've seen. Uh, if we close above the 21, exponential i would be looking for the next move on stellar to bring it up probably towards 16 cents uh if we do close below the 21 exponential tomorrow at 8 p.m eastern time on sunday i'd be looking for for another move down towards 10 cents uh it's really going to depend on what the, uh, what happens there if we want to go very low time frames yeah i'd be saying probably does bounce it up a little bit more here test around 12 cents um and then we'll figure out what tomorrow what tomorrow brings uh but hey that's it's really gonna hinge on that let's go check out traditional marks traditional marks just straight up just straight fucking oh my god man these, these are going to make new highs. So I was looking for a retracement. I was looking for a retracement yesterday uh, back down to around 283 and fill this gap. We're not going to get that. This is an incredibly strong. This 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 is going to make new highs. This is going to make. Oh, my God. This is going to make new highs. This is insane. This is this is this is so fucking crazy. Um, the monthly is what tells me this. The monthly is rallying perfectly off of the same area that we've been holding support on the Stokes for the past uh, nine years, eight nine years since December uh, 2011. You can see we came perfectly down here on the monthly and bouncing right off it. We're above all major moving averages, and I'm just I'm not bearish on anything that looks like this. That really fucking powerful. Holy shit, man. I, and, I, and I was really actually looking for, for retrace. I don't trade this anymore. I haven't traded this in, in, in like a year. Um, but uh, I was actually really looking for retracement down to 283. So that's quite embarrassing to to get that one wrong, um, especially on some that I used to trade so fucking often. Uh, this, is, this is looking good. It's looking good, man. Looking good. Don't I, I don't have too much else to say about it other than that. Uh, you know, next resistance cluster is going to be right around the prior highs. I mean, it's, there's nothing, nothing really else uh, sexy to do there. Uh, let's go check out some forexes for a second here. Yeah, again, uh, this is what I was saying yesterday on on Dixie. You know, I am I, I am looking for a move down short term, but overall long term I am more bullish. I don't know why it keeps on not saving this this uh, this chart, but basically we're we're working on some sort of a massive ascending triangle right over here, uh, and we just tested the resistances of this ascending triangle, which typically is a more bullish result pattern, and I do believe that this one is bullish, um, as we have we have a very bullish posturing on all of the moving averages, but uh, but keep in mind that it can you know it's, it can stay in this triangle for a very long time, and that would also insinuate another test of the bottom you know support uh, and. Since we just tested the resistance and rejected off it, I'd say that the next move probably going to come test some, some supports longer term. But you know, don't don't lose sight of the bigger picture. It is bullish. It is incredibly bullish, and that is important for Bitcoin because, well, well, it's been found that these two actually have a nice relationship. Bitcoin's been in a relationship with Dixie, well, because you know it quite literally trades against it. Um, you know, it's Bitcoin versus the dollar, not Bitcoin versus the fucking you know euro, whatever it could be. But uh, but basically. When Bitcoin was rallying for three years straight from 2015 to 2018, that was when Dixie put in a major top right over here, coming all the way down. Bitcoin was rallying all the way up during that same sort of time. Bitcoin puts in its top while Dixie puts in its bottom. And after that, Dixie starts its march upwards and onwards. And it is in a bullish formation. And Bitcoin is has been coming down. And, you know, as far as the higher time frames are concerned for Bitcoin, you know, if we go over to a monthly, this is still a downtrend. Make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. Doesn't mean that it can't change. I mean, it certainly doesn't mean that. Whoops. It certainly does not mean that it can't change. But you know, you look at the monthly, which yes, this this would be this would be a more macro time frame. Uh, still lower highs, still lower lows. Doesn't mean that it can't change. But for now, the trend is your friend until the end of the trend, and the trend has been stronger for well over a year now, almost a year and a half. So things to consider. Certainly things certainly things to consider as we do get our first kind of major rally off of this uh, off this more aggressive part of this, which you know, to be fair, it's likely to be rejected on the first pass. Um, so yeah, I think I've spoken about everything that I want to speak about most likely. 
Let's make sure going back down to the lower time frames, we can, I think we can wrap it up here. So yeah, it's, uh, you know, realistically for most of the alts, it's going to be appropriate to wait for the weekly. Um, I want to see the, where the weekly closes. Do we close above or below the 21? If the, if we close above the 21, we're get very likely to get si significant continuation with like a nice, a, a nice, a nice big rally, uh, closing below the 21. And we will very, 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 very likely be retracing lower, uh, going on to the lower time frames for Bitcoin, uh, talking about the, the dreaded three hour, uh, we are holding this trend line right here so far. So you could make the argument for this morphing into an ascending triangle. I really dislike taking positions on weekends. Um, the only way I take a position on, on this weekend is if we break 4,900 and I'll be looking and I've has target down here at around 45, 50 to 46. Um, if, and also if we do wick up into this area where the blue pox territory is around 5,250 to 5,300, I would take a short off that area. Um, you know, would it be appropriate to flip long if uh, 5135 is taken out? I mean, there is a trade to be made there, to be fair. You know, if we do take out 30, uh, 5135, probably does make its way back over to 5250-ish area. Um, but uh, but again, I'm not I'm not I'm not in any sort of a rush to get into position uh, for, for all intents and purposes. I am essentially flat. Uh, of course, verification right over there. And really, not too much else to say about it other than that. Uh, really looking, lo really looking at the higher time frames. I mean, the higher time frames look like they want to bounce here, but ultimately the bounce looks like it wants to be sold. Um, is what I'd be saying. The only way that I get bullish once again is if we break above 5,300, then I'd be having a target of 57-ish area. So I think that's going to do it for today. I think I think I've covered just about everything that I want to speak about. Uh, we spoke about that. We spoke about that. Oh, I'm in the process of making a website, which is very revealing. Of like, it's actually quite. It's actually, in some ways, quite hard. In some ways, quite easy. <laughs> it's, it's quite. It's kind of strange. Um, so I'm I'm almost done with that. And actually, I do want to put out the message that at some point in time, I actually will be hiring. So, um, so if you do want to work with me, then well. Uh, maybe maybe consider that in the future. I'm not ready just yet, but uh, but in the future, I will need I, I will need um, some more help to to kind of get this community rolling, and uh, and I'll be hiring for that. Um, so yeah. Uh, anyways, that's gonna do it for today. Been an absolute pleasure to speak with you as always. And uh, what else? To, man, I feel like I'm missing something. I feel like I've missed uh, talking about something. But I think that's going to do it for now. Um, perhaps, perhaps I have to make an update later. I'll be working on some new videos later as well. So, uh, so, 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 looking forward to that. Anyways, that's going to do it for now. I'll be back on. Uh, I'll, I'll be back on tomorrow again. Want to be wishing you well on this beautiful Saturday morning. It's nice and dark in here in, in healthy Finland. So hopefully it's warmer where you are and uh, and sunnier as well. Get some nice happy smiles in your face. And uh, and I'll see you soon. Take care.